Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for taking time to listen to this presentation. Uh, let me start with just a couple of words of apology. Firstly, to colleagues uh, in the fish sector, because I don't think I've done a terribly good job of representing that. So please do improve on this by adding your comments. Uh, secondly, to Stuart, I'm not sure I've quite followed your instructions, but hopefully this will work. So firstly, what are the big issues and trends? We know it well. Demand for livestock and fish doubling, especially in Africa and Asia, meaning that by 2050, each year we'll need a billion tons of dairy, 140 million tons of fish from aquaculture, and 460 million tons of meat. We know as well, livestock and fish play key roles in the livelihoods for millions of people, about a billion in the case of livestock and a quarter of a billion in the case of fish. And there's also, uh, also other livelihood dimensions in terms of the environment, of course, impacted by the production of animals and fish, but also impacted on by changes in the environment. Livestock and fish products really important for food security at household and national levels and as an integral part of producing food, often in mixed systems. And of course, the issue of healthy diets, how much is enough livestock and fish products, a little piece of meat each day or a half a glass of milk or a small tilapia would be enough. And many people in the world, of course, consume far more than that each day, and even more people consume far less. And income. Selling animal products and fish products provides income that can also, of course, contribute to food security as well as a whole host of other livelihood dimensions. In meeting demand, this huge demand for animal and fish products, there's a number of different scenarios that we can consider, and each of them have a different set of implications for these livelihood dimensions. Of course, demand in the developing countries can be met by simply importing products. Big implications for that in the countries where they're produced, but also in terms of livelihood opportunities in the countries where they're being uh, sold and imported to. I've heard uh, even a minister say that when you import these things, it's really like you're exporting your own people in terms of their labor. The demand could also be met by importing the production know-how so that the systems uh, in developed countries get imported and set up large scale in developing countries. And maybe that will happen after some time. But all the evidence we have certainly is that the small scale producer is going to be part of the picture for quite a few decades. And that's where our opportunity lies, is to meet the demand by transforming smallholder systems in a way that does address these different livelihood dimensions. And one other issue, one other trend rather I should say, that we've seen just in recent months really, is that livestock and fish really are starting to appear on the global agenda. We had a, a, an opportunity with The Economist recently to be part of a, one of their events and to have an op-ed as well. But also we've seen a number of calls and had a number of visits, but on the way. Who's doing what? Well, I've put a few I, a few thoughts here. I don't think it's comprehensive and, and probably people would like to add lots more in the comments. Firstly, at sort of regional or global levels, uh, we have, of course, the Sustainable Development Goals. Little mention of animal agriculture or aquaculture uh, here and there a smattering through. But right throughout those 17 goals and many of the indicators, we can see a relevance for these different sectors. Um, so we've got a case to make there, I think. The, of course, the CGIR, the Strategy and Results Framework, and the IDOs, and for sure in the coming weeks will be, uh, well, weeks and months perhaps, I should say, we'll be articulating what is our agenda that really does address the different IDOs. Here in Africa, we've got the CADAP agenda, setting a framework for agriculture in the, in the African countries. And very recently, the African Union's been involved in preparing and launching a livestock development strategy 
for Africa. And we see this as a really good opportunity for us to engage with priority countries in Africa. You've got a strategy. The ministers, you've approved it now. Here's something about implementation that we can really help you with. So a tremendous opportunity. I don't know what that looks like in Asia. And maybe, again, this is something where people could add some comments and, and, and help us to understand the, the context, some of these in Asia as well. We've also got uh, uh, the global agenda for sustainable livestock. Some more than 2,000 people engaged in this from right across developed and developing countries, as well as the um, range of private NGO research development uh, sectors, uh, about seven different uh, groups, if you like, represented there. Uh, and we're part of this, and it seems to be something that's growing momentum. But especially important to say that it's also um, coming together on a common narrative around the potential of animal, and I hope to see fish in there soon, agriculture to address development challenges. And then, of course, in the different places we work, we've got opportunities of private sector, of working with organizations like FAO, the different governments, NGOs, investors in development such as the World Bank and IFAD. One of the things we've seen in, in private sector engagement is that an increasing interest from the Elancos and the Cargills and so on to get involved in developing countries and potentially a role for us in helping translate their know-how and their commercial orientation to things that really work for the systems we have on the ground today. What about position in livestock and fish? I already mentioned a little bit in terms of the strategy and results framework, but here's a couple of key things that I think should underpin where we are and where we're going. One is we cannot address global development challenges without paying attention to livestock and fish agricultural systems, especially in developing economies, and that there's potentially different trajectories depending on economies, commodities, and so on, a range of, a range of issues, and that those demand different research for development priorities. And here's a table that you're probably familiar with, at least from Hillary, we've used this in our strategy, to try and typify what might be different trajectories for today's systems over the coming few decades, some of them growing and intensifying very fast, where the focus of the livestock and fish agenda has been up till now. But other areas where it's remote or very susceptible to climate change or whatever, it's not going to intensify. But there's issues of reducing vulnerability and improving resilience that can be addressed in these systems, as well as potentially providing ecosystem services. And then those systems that have already gone to a high level of intensity, not necessarily industrial systems, where challenges about environment and health and the policies around these are really paramount. I'm not sure what this would look like if we were to try and interweave the potential trajectories, for example, of the aquaculture sector. And that might be something we'd want to think about as we go into the second phase of CRP so that we have a really comprehensive narrative. I hope that's given you something to think about and thank you very much for listening.